Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at an interim reporting example specifically that deals with income taxes. Now in the prior session I explained what interim reporting is and I gave specific details but we, it's good to work an actual example spe specifically showing the annualized approach when it comes to in income taxes. Now just an overview what are we looking at here? Well interim reporting basically breaks the year into into any into any periods but we're going to say into quarterly periods one two three and four so each quarter the company will have to compute their income tax expense based on how well obviously how well the company is doing otherwise if they're not doing well if they're incurring a loss there's no income tax involved so the point is they're going to have to compute their income tax expense every period so the question is how do we know what is our income tax expense how much do we have to pay in income taxes well, we're going to have to annualize, use the annualized approach. Now, how do you use the annualized approach? This is what we will discuss in this session. So first, the annual first quarterly earnings was 400,000. That's the actual. The second quarter actual earning was 610. So I'm just going to put it down here. 400 was the actual and 610. This was the actual. Okay. Now, after we went through the first quarter, the company will have to do, once we are done with the first quarter, they're going to have to estimate the annual earnings. And after they end up in the first quarter, they thought for the whole year, they're going to estimate based on this quarter and based on projection, basically they have to estimate, they're going to have total earnings of 1450 Also, they have two, they're going to have two different, two differences they're gonna they're gonna have to pay environmental violation penalties of thirty five thousand and dividend exclusion they qualify for 190. so now we are ready to do the computation how do we do this computation well remember the those are differences and specifically they are permanent differences so how do we compute our income tax expense our tax provision for the first quarter that's that's what we need to do here's what we need to do the estimated annual earning, 1450000 that's giving. We add back to it the environmental violation policy. Why? Why do we do this? We do this because when we arrived to 1450 we deducted 35000 because we paid this penalty, and this is for GAP. So for GAP, we deducted this number. For tax purposes, we have to add it back, and this is one of the differences that we have to add it back. Also, dividend income exclusion. Dividend income exclusion is a phantom, is a basically a fake deduction, but it's a deduction for tax purposes. Then we'll have to deduct from 1,450 because we did not deduct this 190 to come up to 1,450. Therefore, for income tax purposes, we deduct this 190. Now, if you're not, if you're confused here, like what is he talking about? Permanent and temporary differences. You want to go to Farhat Lectures and take a look at my income tax, the third income tax session in order to understand this. But I'm assuming you, at this point, if you are learning about interim financial reporting, you already know the differences between permanent and temporary differences. Anyhow, we come up with estimated taxable income. So this is the taxable income, 1250 Although the annual earning, 1450 after we account for the tax differences, it will come down to 1950 We multiply this amount, we multiply this amount by, by 42%. This is what we have to pay to the IRS, 42%. And we're going to come up with an estimated annual taxes payable of 500 five hundred forty three thousand nine hundred now this is the estimated annual tax if we take this amount divided by the estimated annual earning we find out that the effective annual rate because this is for both federal state and tax the estimate is approximately 37.5 percent overall now we actually earned four hundred thousand for this quarter we'll take the four hundred thousand times 37.5 and this is how much we book for income tax expense provision therefore we debit income tax expense one hundred fifty thousand forty one dollars and credit income taxes payable one hundred fifty thousand and forty one dollars now let's take a look and do the computation for q2 the second quarter in the second quarter remember what i did earlier i said you know we were standing at the first second first second third and fourth 
the second quarter, when we got to the second quarter, our estimate of annual earning is 1,520. Well, the estimates could change. We're making more profit now for the rest of the year. That's fine. The differences are the same, which is we deduct one, we deduct 190, add up 35, so the total deduction is 145 to arrive to our new estimated taxable income as of Q2. So as of Q2, our estimated taxable income is 1,350,000 after the adjustment for the environmental penalty and for the dividend received deduction. Our estimated annual taxable is 573,000, which is 1,365 times 42%. Again, what we do is we'll take this amount We'll divide it, by, divide it by the total earnings, and we find out our effective combined annual tax rate, 37.7, as of the second quarter. Good. Now, in the second quarter, we have the first quarter earnings of actual earning of 400,000, the second quarter actual earning of 610. Together, the actual cumulative earnings, here I'm computing the cumulative earning, $1,010,000. I'm gonna mult I'm gonna multiply this by 37.7 and my cumulative tax provision needed as of the second quarter 380,943. Excellent. I already booked 150,041 in the first quarter. What's left in the second quarter is 230,902. Therefore, I will debit income tax expense 230,902, credit income taxes payable 230,902. Basically, when I combine the first and the second quarter, it will equal to 380,942, which is this number right here. At the end of the year, we're going to go through the third and the fourth quarter. We're going to find out the final income tax and income tax is payable. But this is how we annualize it. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, work MCQs, true false exercises. That's going to help you do better in your course, as well as CPA exam. That's what I do. I provide supplemental material. Good luck. Study hard. Stay safe.